Well, Mr. Lacey, I think um, I saw where you were born in 1939. Yes, sir, I was born in 1939. I was actually born in Atlanta. Okay. At a place called Lakewood Clinic. Uh -huh. We're like Lakewood um, right. Parkway or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So almost East Point? Almost East Point, correct. Mm -hmm. Now, if I could, I'd like to start with my father. Yes, please. He was born in 1915 okay. in Cherokee County. Mm -hmm. He was born on a farm that was close to the Avery community. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty good sized farm. The road going through the farm is Lacey Road, mm -hmm. and still is today, Lacey Road, mm -hmm. Cherokee County. Mm -hmm. Now, he was born the last, him and his twin sister, of a family of seven, the youngest, in other words, of the mm -hmm. family of seven. Mm -hmm. Now, them living on the farm, they was all well-educated, which was... I think a little unusual for all farm mm -hmm. kids. Now, four of the seven that I know of taught school in Cherokee County. Mm -hmm. He had uh, two twin brothers. There's two sets of twins in that family, wow. him and his sister and the two twin brothers. Mm -hmm. The twin brothers was Preston and Presley Lacey. Mm -hmm. They taught and their wives their whole career taught school in Cherokee County. Mm -hmm. Now, the, he had a sister named Ozell Lacey. Mm -hmm. When she left home, she moved down here to Ackworth over on Woodstock Road. Mm -hmm. She roomed and board with a family named Sellers. Mm -hmm. She was a teacher in the one-room school at Oak Grove mm -hmm. in the early 30s. Mm -hmm. Now, that school was across the road from what is now Oak Grove Church, mm -hmm. similar in size and shape and everything. Now, there's a picture somewhere on the Internet of her and them students standing by that old school building. Mm -hmm. The old school building was still there as I was a young boy. But uh, it overgrowed the school, and they was having to use the church as overflow for schooling. Mm -hmm. And they built the big brick school where Oak Grove School is now in 1935. Mm -hmm. Now, Daddy, when he graduated high school, their major crop was syrup cane. Mm -hmm. And they had a syrup cane, sorghum syrup mill on the farm. Mm -hmm. So they made their own syrup, plus they did neighbor's syrup as well. Well, he had an uncle, Uncle Andrew. Mm -hmm. It was his uncle, and we was taught to call him Uncle Andrew as well. Mm -hmm. He had left home and set up a produce and vegetable route in East Point, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Well, in the fall, he would come up there and get sorghum syrup to put on his route. Mm -hmm. Well, Daddy wound up going down there and getting a job with Uncle Andrew mm -hmm. to be a peddler. Mm -hmm. Now, Uncle Andrew, the name many, had a huge house. It was on the main street in East Point that run east and west. I think it's called Central Avenue. Mm -hmm. They had a big old two-story house down there. They had people to room and board, and he had a fleet of cars to pedal produce. Mm -hmm. Most of them Model A Fords. This was in the 30s. Mm -hmm. uh, Daddy went down there and roomed and board, $5 a week, room and board. Mm -hmm. He bragged all his life about he saved $100 that first year, which was almost half of what he made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he was good with his money. Well, they had to get up early in the morning, like 4.30 in the morning, go from Hateville to downtown Atlanta. The farmer's market was in Atlanta, close to the railroad terminal, because mm -hmm. I guess a lot of that stuff come by rail. Mm -hmm. We had to barter every day for the vegetables and fruit. You know, they might get uh, corn from one 
man and his okra and peas from another. So he had to spend every morning loading bushel baskets tied all the way around that Model A with all them vegetables and then, uh, eggs and bread and stuff went where the back seat was in boxes, you know, milk and stuff like that. Then he had to go to Havel and he had a route down there, same route every day. Mm-hmm. Now he had people, ladies mostly, that loved to buy in the morning. Some love to buy in the middle of the day, mm-hmm. some of the afternoon. All right, he'd go on the street where the lady in the early in the morning wanted to get it fresh and everything. The lady down the same street might want hers in midday. Mm-hmm. So he had to zigzag all over East Point all day. Mm-hmm. Now he liked the last customers because there's usually ladies that waited till their husband got her. And they always liked to barter. Mm-hmm. And daddy liked to empty the load. Mm-hmm. So well, that was his favorite part, dealing with people wanting to get a little extra. He'd make a little extra if they buy this, buy two, and so forth, mm-hmm. and go in. Now, Aunt many used all the leftovers to feed all them people. <laughs> and she was a good cook. Uh, in later years, when we'd go to see them, uh, you know, we'd eat with them, and she was still a real good cook. Mm-hmm. Well, he had a roommate, I guess you call him, another peddler mm-hmm. named Edward Upchurch. They become real close friends, wound up lifelong friends. Mm-hmm. Well, Uncle Andrew would let them drive their car, their route car, home once a month to see family. Mm-hmm. Well, Edward Upchurch would go with Daddy up to Cherokee County, and they'd spend a weekend. When his turn come, they'd go way down below Atlanta to his family, both of them, well, Edward met a lady, Viler Smith, on the route, a young, pretty lady. Well, he asked her out. Well, not knowing she wanted her sister to go along. Mm-hmm. Her sister was Hester Smith. So he got Daddy to go on a double date. They wound up June 38 having a double wedding. Mm-hmm. Daddy and my mother and Uncle Ed and ain't mm-hmm. by. Mm-hmm. Well, Daddy, he rented a house on Perkinson Avenue because they couldn't stay in the room and board place. And I was, <clears throat> that Perkinson Avenue was off Stewart Avenue, just north of Hateful, I was. Mm-hmm. And uh, my grandpa, Grandpa Smith, was a truck driver for the Fulton County Board of Education. Hmm. All right, he uh, got Daddy a job driving a truck, you know, to get a better job. Hmm. And he drove a drunk truck around where they're building new schools. Pretty hard, hard work. Mm-hmm. Well, I was born in '39, a year after they married. Mm-hmm. Well, along about 42, one of his friends got a job at one one of Robbins Robbins Air Force Base. Told Daddy he ought to come down there and get a job. Hmm. He did as a machinist. And they schooled him and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, my very first memory, and I was pretty small, was that move Mm -hmm. to one of Robbins. Mm -hmm. Now, he still didn't have a car. He was driving the company truck home and everything. Mm-hmm. He borrowed that friend's Hudson. Now, I didn't know that at the time. I know it from here and later. Mm-hmm. But that long move all day long to one of Robbins, Georgie, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. I don't ever remember changing homes. Mm-hmm. Well, they moved in a project down there. And it's like Meritor Place was in Meritor for the bummer plant and all that stuff. And you had real close neighbors. So government building, yeah. federal government Yeah, it's it just a From row Florida. after row after row, all uniform and everything. Mm-hmm. Our next door neighbor was a register. I see it like the cash register register. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's right or not, but they was an older family than us. Mm-hmm. So their youngest daughter, I think her name was Rachel, was my age. Mm-hmm. Well, when school started, I mean, first grade, there in Warner Robbins, 
The school was up there on Central Avenue, which is just maybe three blocks from where we was at. Mm-hmm. There's a shotgun building. Now, this is a firm memory, mm-hmm. my very firmest early memory. Uh-huh. They carry me up there and show me the school. Now, the shotgun building was a hallway down the middle and classrooms on each side. Mm-hmm. But there in front was the best playground that I thought could ever be built. Mm-hmm. It had sliding boards, a little one and a big one, and it had seesaws or rolls of them, and this on and on. Well, as soon as I got that, I run that sliding board and everybody went on, run up, slid down, you know, the little one. Mm-hmm. Right behind it was a white picket fence up against the building. Mm-hmm. And you could see through the cracks. I run back there and peeped in. There's sandboxes and little buckets in there. And I asked mm-hmm. Daddy, I said, what's that? He said, that's where the first grade is. That's where you'll be. Mm-hmm. Why are they fencing in the first grade was mm-hmm. big? <laughs> I said I'd never forget that night. Mm-hmm. But they told me my job was was to walk Rachel Register to school every day. Mm-hmm. That was my job. Mm-hmm. So that made me feel a little important. I had to walk her to first mm-hmm. grade and back every day. Mm-hmm. Well, the war ended in September that same year. Mm-hmm. This right after about the time I started school. Mm-hmm. So Daddy lost his job. You know, soon the afterwards. Over. Yeah, the war was over and we had to go. And I think we stopped at uh, grandmother's and hateful till he found the place up here in Ackworth. Mm-hmm. So we moved to Ackworth, continued my first grade. Mm-hmm. Well, mother walked me to school then. It's about a mile from down there up to the schoolhouse. Mm-hmm. It was the old school that's been mentioned before. Mm-hmm. Two-story old building, reminded me of a church, had a mm-hmm. uh, bell, you know, tower. I got to ring the bell one time. <laughs> but the first day, we went into the classroom. It being the middle of the year, she introduced me to the class, you know. Mm-hmm. All of them knew each other. She introduced herself to me as Fanny B. McClure. Okay. Well, when she said the word Fanny, that little boy named Charles in the back giggled. And when he did, the rest of them giggled, including me. Well, she put a halt to it right quick and said, everybody calls me Miss McClure. Mm -hmm. That's what they'd been taught to call her. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't remember her name today if it hadn't been for that introduction. (laughs) Uh But Fanny B. McClure went on and taught hundreds of Ackworth people first grade. I mean, literally hundreds for years and years. Mm -hmm. She had a sister named Charlotte McClure. I met her when I went to high school. But I went second grade in Ackworth. And uh, that lady's name was Miss Day. I don't remember her first name. But our house was down there where Ralph Dunn later built his shopping center. Mm-hmm. And he had a laundromat and a little grocery store and other mm-hmm. stores down through there. And later, they built on the very back of a Colonial. And then it went on to other grocery stores, including he run Dunn's supermarket there for years. Well, he dug that out. When we got there, it was level where our house was and our driveway come in an angle from Casey's uh, store Mm -hmm. and went to the back of the house and there was a built on car shed back there that was full of junk we didn't park in but it had a pasture daddy had a milk cow he raised a hog there Mm -hmm. now that seems unusual today to be there but the dairy was just beyond Casey's store across a street where Dave's Chevrolet was for years and years. That was mm-hmm. a dairy and we come. Of course, they had cows back behind. Mm-hmm. Now, there was a street, Rockdale Drive, that run just past Casey's store mm-hmm. back to where, I, where the lake is now. And there's a big old house back there. It's still back there today. That's where Masons lived. Now, they owned and operated the the cotton mill. Mm -hmm. Well, when Daddy first got there, he worked for a grocery store here in the heart of town, across the street right up here from uh, Henry's 
where the flower shop is now. It was Luther Haynes Grocery. Mm -hmm. And he got that as his first job, and that's because he's familiar with produce and stuff and how to bottle it, make them buy, instead of two carrots, mm -hmm. buy a bottle. And, mm -hmm. and he worked in there to start with as a produce man. Mm -hmm. And he helped build his tire shop down there now, but back then it was Shaw's Sinclair Station. He got a construction job there, right almost across from where we lived. Mm -hmm. Well, then uh, the Masons was settling out to Coates and Clark, and he got a job there as a machinist, mm -hmm. which he was trained at one of the Air Force. But mm -hmm. Now, they needed machinists because they're taking out these machines, putting in new machines, and setting them up. He worked the rest of his working life at Coates and Clark. Mm -hmm. But in 48, he bought a farm on Woodstock Road. Now, how he got a hold of that farm, my uncle Joe Brand married <clears throat> Odessa Lacey, mm -hmm. my aunt. Mm -hmm. And he had a big farm out there on Woodstock Road, it's well over 100 acres. Mm -hmm. Well, in 48, he bargained for a bigger farm where 92 and Woodstock Road intersects now. It was huge. It went from Oak Grove Church about a half mile out of Alabama Road. Now, he bought it from a man named Dave McClure. Dave was real big in that community. He up somewhat, somehow, on building the new school in 35 and so forth. Well, <clears throat> Uncle Joe traded that big farm to him. Well, Daddy bargained with Dave McClure. Now, the big farm of Uncle Joe's, well, I've got a picture of a family outing there at the old house in 1940. But his brother, Altry Brand, took a section of it where the old house was. Uncle Joe, along about 39, 40, somewhere along there, built a new house out from the old house. Mm -hmm. They used the same driveway back then. Mm -hmm. and Daddy bought that house and the biggest portion of the farm from Dave McClure. Mm -hmm. And that's how he, he got over there into the, the farming. Mm -hmm. Now, he farmed that long enough to pay for it and worked at the mill every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm growing up, I helped with that. The farming business. When I was you grown? Well, his main crop was he planted the bottoms with uh, corn. In early days, he rented out some of the bottoms to other people for a portion of what they growed. And uh, that was helping pay for the mortgage and so forth on the farm. Mm -hmm. He didn't do that but just a few years. And then he cut the timber to make a big payment on the mortgage and mm -hmm. so on and so he, he paid for that farm long before I left home. Mm -hmm. But uh, we went from a mule to a tractor. And I, I used a tractor in the evening while he worked. And, and then come the horse I like to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the horse. <laughs> well, the horse... We got him when he was six years old. His name was Black Joe. He was solid black. The man that horse was best friends. Uh, I was the one that fed him in the morning. I was the one that combed him. I was the one that petted him. I was the one that fed him mm -hmm. all his meals and water. And uh, I don't like to call him a pet, but me and him was best friends. Mm -hmm. well, as a teenager, he was my transportation. Now he loved kids, and which is unusual. I taught him a few tricks, like to bow, and, mm -hmm. and uh, he was six years old. So I told him, when, taught him when I asked him how old he was to take his right foot and hit the ground six times. Mm -hmm. He stayed six years old his whole life, mm -hmm. but <laughs> it was always fun. How old are you? You know, he'd do his foot. Mm -hmm. Well, when I go see a girl. The whole family 
I, I went to see a girl that had a lot of sisters and brothers. They spent their time riding a horse. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, when they, he had kids riding him, he would never get above a walk. Mm. Don't matter how many times they say, get up. Yeah. I had him try and he would walk. Mm -hmm. And wherever he's at, they'd make a circle, you know. And uh, that was my transportation. He had a gate, they call it, uh, sort of a slow gallop. He could go all day. You know, we could go three or four miles, you know, mm -hmm. that, that pace. Well, the last day of school come, when I was first year high school, I had to leave Oak Grove School and go back to Aqua because they didn't have a high school. Mm -hmm. And we lived in Edge of Cobb County. The last day of school that first year, I guess it was in ninth grade, they said if we had transportation, we could pick up our port card, report card and go home. Otherwise, we had to stay the bus run. So I rode the horse to school. And I tied him down what's called the flats, down on the low part of the school ground. Mm -hmm. Went up there and got my report card. Come back and had a bunch of kids there. They wanted to pet the horse and ride the horse. And when one group would leave, another group would come. The last bus had done gone when I got through letting <laughs> kids ride the horse. <laughs> I got home, I said, I thought she was coming straight back. And I said, well, got tied up, <laughs> people mm -hmm. wanting to ride the horse. Mm -hmm. So that was my horse story. Then, that pretty well covers the history and act was, and when me and her are married, we got a house here in Ackworth. Well, let's see, you say 60 years, so that yeah. goes back to 1958? Yeah, we got married 59. 59. Uh, we'll be married 59. 60 years next year, okay. our next anniversary. And you still got a little bit of hair. I went to work in Meritor as a body man. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I had to take up some of my daddy's habits being wise with the money because body shops didn't pay very much back then. Mm -hmm. And me and her bought a house down on Cowan Road. When we married, we moved in a duplex down there on Cowan Road on Luther Henry's property. Mm -hmm. He owned a lot of property on Cowan Road. And he had uh, renter houses and we moved in his duplex when we first got married. We lived there a few months, and uh, one of those renter houses come empty. He had to vacate some renters that wasn't paying their rent, mm -hmm. and they trashed the building. Mm -hmm. They tore the screens and mm -hmm. busted eggs in it and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We asked him about renting it, and he said, well, they had to clean it up. Oh, I volunteered for us to clean it up. Mm -hmm. Well, she done the cleaning in the side, and I bought a roll of screen wire, and I put the screen wire on it and everything. Mm -hmm. Knocked off a couple of months' rent right off the bat, you know. And then we asked him about it. And she instigated this because she worked with his daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. Buy it, to rent to buy. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, you know. Oh, okay. So we bought our first house pretty, pretty early. Mm -hmm. And we paid rent. Well, Mr. Henry died while we was doing that. Mm -hmm. I got a little worried because all me and him had was a handshake and a little scribble piece of paper, rent to buy and the balance, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we paid the rent every month. Mm -hmm. So I told his son in law, his executor of state, I said, I know Miss Henry could use some cash money, couldn't she? And he said, yes. I said, well, I'll go ahead and pay this house off. So I borrowed the money from my boss. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just paid $1,800 for that property and the house. Wow. And we had it down to, I don't know, under 1000 I guess. Mm -hmm. and I borrowed that from the boss on the agree to keep paying him the rent money every month, mm -hmm. you know, just like we'd been doing. Yeah. So we went up to a lawyer here in town named Grady G., yeah. He fixed up a deed and all that stuff, and mm -hmm. and Miss Henry and 
the executor all sign all that stuff and give me a deed and I give them the money. We had our first home. Mm -hmm. uh, we still own that property now. Mm -hmm. We built a new home there in 72. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still live in that house that I had built in 72. Mm -hmm. Still the same property? Still the same. Tore the old house down? Tore the old house down. Mm -hmm. Later bought the uh, property next door, mm -hmm. which is one of his renter houses. When uh, he had sold it the same way, you know, they had had theirs paid before he died. Mm -hmm. But when they got old and disabled and had to go to nursing home and everything, I bought it from his estate. Mm -hmm. So now we've got a big lot there. It's uh -huh. on Lee Street, mm -hmm. and which was originally Henry property. Mm -hmm. But uh, unlike my daddy, I didn't make a lot of history in town because me and her both worked in Marietta. I mean, we worked long hours. We just come home, slept, and went back. Mm -hmm. But my father, he was a Masonic Mason, which I don't know nothing about because I wasn't one. Mm -hmm. But I do know he was treasurer of it for 50 years wow. of the Aqua Lodge. And he kept it in the green in a well-working mm -hmm. well lodge with his money. Where was the lodge? The lodge at that time was on a two-story building up at the end of, uh, what was this, Center Street, where we're on now. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a big two-story building up on the corner, okay. just walking distance from here. Mm -hmm. That's where it was at that time. It was upstairs up there. Mm -hmm. They built a lodge hall on McLean Circle later years. Mm -hmm. But uh, I never did never did have an interest in the lodge. Mm -hmm. uh, too busy and whatever. Well, he become friends with politicians and mm -hmm. businessmen, and he was active in the Aquas goings on, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, everybody in town knew him. They didn't mean so much because mm -hmm. I worked, you know, all the time until we retired. Right. Where were you working in Marietta? Uh, when I went to work there, it was called Crane Garage. Okay. They had 24-hour record service and mm -hmm. body and mechanical shop. Mm -hmm. It was on 41 down below the big chicken. Mm -hmm. She worked in New Way Laundry which was on yeah. Page Street. Yeah. And uh, she worked her whole time there to she. Mm -hmm. But uh, that later on become a hearse and ambulance dealer, Crane Garage did, and it changed to Crane M&M &M sales and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. But I worked there until I retired, mm -hmm. 31 or two years. Yeah. yeah. That, um where the new way cleaner was is right about where that park, the new park is now mm -hmm. in Marietta. The, yeah. Yeah, the Elizabeth Porter Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lindsay owned it. So. Mm -hmm. She worked her whole working life. Well, she later went to work in a place that was called Trans Art. I worked where, my way all the way up to manager. That new way? Correct. So that is about our history because we didn't make a whole lot of history after we married mm -hmm. <laughs> in town. We, we watched it grow, of course. Well, I think you had something you wanted to say about your farm neighbors. Okay. Now, they was a big influence on me over there in the farm. The road we lived on, a mile stretch or a half mile each way, mm -hmm. was more preachers than anything else. Preachers. Preachers. Baptist preachers. Okay. Now, them and their children. <laughs> uh -huh. I know you've heard stories about the preacher's son and yeah. all that. Well, they influenced me. Now, one of the things they taught me was honesty. Mm -hmm. I tried to hold that all my life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, help your neighbor that needed help and so forth. We still do that every Christmas. We find somebody more needy than us and we help them. Mm -hmm. But all that was an influence from them. Now, I had questions on this honesty deal about car traders, and there was cow traders back then. 
Mm -hmm. The people said they told stories and misled and so forth. And I said, is that dishonest? Hmm. And one of the preachers told me, no, that's business. <laughs> and he said, there's a difference. He said, there's good business and there's bad business. Mm -hmm. There's good deals and there's bad deals. And I said, well, I've heard people say there's cheated. He said, the only time you hear the word cheated in a car deal, trade, is if he got the bad deal. Sometimes he'd say he cheated me, but said it was really, he was got the bad deal. Mm -hmm. He said, now, a lot of times the customer got the good deal. Mm -hmm. And he said, that was business. So that brought up when I bought my first car. I had saved up $100. Now, down in Marietta, there's used car lots out Roswell Street all the way to the four lane, mm -hmm. both sides. They must have been 30 car lots. So I go down to Marietta, me and a friend of mine, we hitchhike down there, and I walked that street hunting a $100 car. Mm -hmm. Now, I, that was hard to find. Now, I wasn't but 15 years old, so it's probably 53 or somewhere along there. Mm -hmm. And you just, even then, it's hard to find a $100 car. And they'd all just shake their head and send me on my way. Well, I found a 40 Ford. The man wanted $125 for it. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that kind of money. I didn't want to spend the whole 100 I needed to buy gas and something to eat and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we turned it down, went all the way out. I found a Hudson, a 50 model Hudson. Mm -hmm. That man was firm on $125. I tried to pull daddy's stuff and barter with him. He said, no, sir, I'll give 100 for it. If I can't make 25, I'll drive it. So I had to leave that one. So I'll go back to the 44 see if I get him down. <laughs> he said, now I've got two. I've got the one you're looking at. So I got one out back, it's got a whole lot better body but the motor is pretty well shot. Mm -hmm. He said, I've been thinking about taking the two and making them one because this one here has got a good motor. And I said, well, why do you take the one that's got a, the weak motor in it? And he said, a hundred. And I said, I'd give 75 and finally bought it. Mm -hmm. Now my thought was as a kid, them motors was pretty plentiful, you know, flathead Ford motors. And I could find a motor later, you know, and put in it. Mm -hmm. He put a battery in it, cranked it, and drove me around the block. Told me it would run, all the gears and everything worked. So I bought it, brought it home. Starter went out pretty quick. Well, we lived on a hill. So I'd always park it where I could just get in, my clutch in, roll and crank it. And then I'd park it everywhere, mm -hmm. where it'd be a hill, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mama would never forgot in her life, she wanted to go to the drive-in. Daddy worked second shift, couldn't go to the drive-ins, you know, he was at work. And there's a movie come on here, and I quit the drive-in she wanted to see. Mm -hmm. Well, I told her I'd care. Well, the drive-in here in Ackworth was built different to modern drive-ins. Drive a uh, man named Red Hudson built that thing. Mm -hmm. And he built it, instead of drive through the parking places, you drove up to a block like a cross tie, and you was looking up at the screen, sitting in your car, looking uphill. Well, that car wouldn't crank by rolling backwards out of that parking place, and I knew it from going to the drive in. I always parked on the very end of the road mm -hmm. at an angle. <laughs> It would roll back out of the angle, then it'd roll into the road. I could crack. Mm -hmm. Well, I went in there and parked at that angle, and my mother was embarrassed. We was parked what she called crossways. Mm -hmm. I said, well, you can see better out of the side glasses. <laughs> and I got in the back and made her watch the movie. Mm -hmm. And of course, I rolled back, rolled out, and cranked it, went home. Mm -hmm. And she remembered that. Well, I traded up for a 46 Ford. Mm -hmm. Now the 46 Ford had a good motor, but it had a weak clutch. So he traded me, he got a car with a weak motor, mm -hmm. no starter. And I got one that had a weak clutch. Well, you don't use clutch strenuously except starting off, and I was used to starting off rolling everywhere mm -hmm. I went. Mm -hmm. 
Well, one day Hick wouldn't make it up a hill over here on what's 92 now. It's called Riding Hill. Mm-hmm. We walked to town to a junkyard that's a mile north of here. Mm-hmm. We had to walk about three miles to town, then up to the junkyard, the Mashburn's junkyard. It's where everybody bought their used parts. Mm-hmm. And we asked him if he had a clutch for the Ford, and he said, yeah, there's a bucket full of them back there. Pick you out one, mm-hmm. Ford clutches. We picked out a thick one, charged us a dollar, and we walked back. The only tools I had was just pull wrench and pliers, screwdrivers, and a few wrenches. Mm-hmm. We loosened that transmission, couldn't figure out how to get it out. So we walked over to a boy's house we knew that worked on his own car a little older than us. And he come down there and he, he couldn't figure it out. He said, but uh, he had a car and he carried us over to a mechanic. The mechanic said, you either have to pull the motor or the rear end. You have to have chain hoist and all this stuff. We asked him, so what would you charge to put this clutch in? He said, I wouldn't do it for the car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's sort of a blow, you know? Yeah. So this guy with the car hooked a chain to it, and we pulled it up here above town near Meisner's junk yard. Mm-hmm. Now, he would give 25 20 $25 for a junk car, but if it's running, He'd get 30, 35. Mm -hmm. So we pulled a chain up there, and then he got behind it and pushed it. I cranked it up and got it running because it run real good. Mm -hmm. A little hump going in his driveway, so he got me up about 40 miles an hour. I went down there and turned in that hump. Mm -hmm. Went rolling to a quick stop up there in front of his little truck at his office in. Mm -hmm. Raced the motor time too. How can I help you? I said, I want to sell my car. He said, well, it's a good running car. Why are you going to sell it? I said, I need the money. Hmm. He, said, <laughs> he said, well, I'll give you $25. I said, oh, no, I want 45 He said, I ain't never paid $45 for a used car. He said, but, you know, I'd give 30 I said, well, I'd take 40 mm-hmm. I'll meet you in the middle. 35 is sold. Hmm. <laughs> Now, I got a good deal because that thing wouldn't move out of its tracks. <laughs> but that was my raising and the honesty and everything and being told good deals and bad deals and so forth. And I, I've tried to be on the good deals ever since. But that was what I learned growing up in a group of preachers. Okay. Uh, tell me how you're related to the Lacey Drugs folks. All right, I brought a picture. I don't know that I can remember it, but I'll try. My great-grandfather was John Lacey. Mm -hmm. He had a half-brother. I forget his name. Isaiah or some long name. Now, he, uh, his half-brother moved his family up here to Fairmount, Georgia. Okay. And they was businessmen. Mm-hmm. Well, they decided that Lacey needed an E in it. Is that how the E got That's in That's how the E got in it. They left Cherokee County from up there on that same farm, mm-hmm. moved to Fairmount, put the E, and they went in business. They still some carpet places up there, mm-hmm. Lacey's. Well, one of his sons, if I've got it right, was Gober Lacey, George Lacey, mm-hmm. that bought Durham's Lacey store here in Ack, where they made it a Lacey drug store. Mm-hmm. By that being a half great grandfather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's Gober. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Oh, yeah, George. Uh, George yeah, Gober. George Gober Lacey. Mm-hmm. He's the one that come to Iowa and bought out Durham's uh, drug store and uh-huh. made it Lacey Drug, and it's been Lacey Drug ever since. Okay. So it's a distance, but it's still, as a friend of mine, David McCollum, says, everybody's cousins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like they are. Um, well, let's say you've... Um, 
You've lived here for a long, 72 years now, I guess. Yeah, uh, we moved here in 46, I guess, and we've been at Ackworth address ever since. What, what keeps you in the Ackworth? <laughs> well, it's home. <laughs> It's home, mm -hmm. and uh, we like we liked it then, and we still like it today. Um, I have to tell you, in New York, minute she's never leaving. Mm -hmm. You know, well, that's, this is our home. Well, I think you said if you'd go anywhere, it'd be Ella J. What yes. is that? Well, we sort of adopted Ella J as a second home. Uh, we love to visit up there and the surrounding stuff. Mm -hmm. Most of our life, if we hit it anywhere, it'd be to LJ or through LJ, mm -hmm. going to the mountains and so forth. Well, in the early 70s, we bought a log cabin up there. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, uh, me and my father went in together mm -hmm. and uh, paid for it, and then I paid him for it and mm -hmm. so forth. And so we spent our spare time mm -hmm. in LJ, mm -hmm. you know. If we want to get out of the, the rat race, as we call it, mm -hmm. you can go up there. And of course, LG's road since then by a long shot, mm -hmm. and the big highways went through it. Mm -hmm. But it's still, it's a whole lot quieter, and mm -hmm. got good neighbors and everything. So we do enjoy going up there. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I said if I had to had to go anywhere, it would be there. Does it reminds you of what Ackworth used to be. Like? Exactly when. Uh, when we bought up there, it was it was a small town, mm -hmm. and uh, the story I like to tell about when I went up there, there was a telephone already in the cabin that we bought from a lady, mm -hmm. and I had it changed over to my name mm -hmm. by phone. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know, a week or two later we went up there, I went down to the telephone company, L. J. Mm -hmm. and this one lady run the office. I went in there, I said, I'd like to pick up a phone director. She said, you must be Mr. Lacey. Mm -hmm. I said, how did you know that? She said, oh, you're the only one that's got a new phone this month. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Not about a new phone, so. <laughs> The only one that got a new phone that month. Mm -hmm. So well, it, it was a small town then. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think about Ackworth now? Well, I'm all for our progress. Mm -hmm. I mean, I may even make fun of some of the things, like the new bridge up here, but I'm all for the mm -hmm. the progress. And uh, you know, the big new complex down there where Dave Chevrolet was. Mm -hmm. and that's progress, you know, and it's the town is growing. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm proud to be still here to see it grow, you know. And uh, we've got a real good mayor and everything now, and he, he's making... Downtown, stay downtown, and mm -hmm. you know the big boxes have to go over on four lanes and so forth. So mm -hmm. I, I'm proud of the city. 